Hey folks, it's Dr. Brenda and Izzy. Say hello, Izzy. There you go. Izzy had a, a long night as we had a storm blow through. So I am Dr. Brenda. I'm a sociologist, a financial coach, a full-time RVer, traveling the country with my three cats uh, here at, to bring you all kinds of great financial information. It is a Money Monday. So today I'm going to tell you about what's on my mind and then I'm going to cut over to the laptop and and crunch some numbers for you. All right, so as a financial coach, I work with a lot of women and I have recognized this pattern and it popped up again yesterday in a conversation with a friend. There is a tendency to hoard cash. I mean, I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I know, I wish you were in that situation too sitting in a bank, sitting in a bank, making practically zero interest. And inevitably when I ask them, well, why, you know, what's why part, uh, part of it is like, well, I don't want to lose it. But the bigger part of it is I don't know what to do with it. I, I'm just totally lost. I've got no background on investing. I don't know what to do with it. But you know, every year, every month that that money sits in a traditional savings account or even a CD, you're losing money. Inflation eats away at it. So I'm going to take you through this little tutorial and show you how much your money can make and how to get started. A couple of easy, easy ways to get started. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's talk about savings versus investing. Now, some of this information I'm giving you you can also find at gutsywomenfinances.com. If you're not already a member, I invite you to check it out. Let's get into it. Okay. The savings rate. I'm coming at you January 10th, 2022. These are the best savings rates, best money market rates around. Anywhere from 0.5% to the hefty 0.6%. So for purposes of this exercise, we're going to go ahead and use the 0.6% as the average annual return. How much can you earn if you invest? Now, that is a loaded question. Sometimes you're losing money. Sometimes you're making money. It fluctuates all the time, right? So over the last decade, the average return for domestic stocks, almost 17%. Gold, almost nothing, um, well, less than nothing. And so you can see it jumps around quite a bit. Uh, CDs, a little 0.4%. Um, now, given the fact that I'm talking to women who may have a big cash cushion, you are, are probably a reluctant investor. So you're likely not gonna put all your money into domestic or international stocks, into the high risk places. So the key is diversification. Um, you know, if you're 20 years old, 25 years old, and you're gonna let that money sit for 40 years, for 30 years, go with the stocks, at least when you're younger, that is a great way to go. But as you get older, generally, you become a little bit more conservative in your investing. So I had to decide, what am I gonna use for an average rate of return now? Some people have used 10%, I'm like, well, you know, in the past, 10% for stocks has worked. But again, if you've got a diversified portfolio, you, you likely have some bonds which have a lower uh, rate of return generally. I used 6%. I'm like, we've got to start somewhere. That's a pretty conservative estimate. And again, this fluctuates. It's a bit of a roller coaster when you're investing. Um, things go up, things go down. The key is not to pull out when things are down. So we're going to use. 0.6% for the savings and 6% for the investments. There are so many calculators out there. There's so many calculators that often can just make you more confused than when you started. So this is, I created a bit.ly for one that I, I use. It's at American Century Investments. I've used it forever and it's pretty spot on. It's pretty accurate. When I look at how my numbers have uh, uh, shaped up uh, pretty close. So there's the bit.ly, bit.ly backslash future value calc. Okay, so that's the calculator I use. 
wanted to run some numbers so that you can see the difference between putting money into a savings account versus investing it. So began with, it's a little bit noisy back here. The cats, uh, the cats are having a grand time today. So that's what you hear. Savings account, 0.6% run the calculations what is that going to be in one year five years ten years and twenty years again i'm starting with a ten thousand dollars starting point not adding more money to it just again to keep it simple so after one year that ten thousand dollars has earned a whole sixty bucks ten thousand sixty but go on down to where we've got ten ten years um, 10,606, 20 years, it's worth $11,271. Let's take that $10,000. Let's put it into an investment account that averages, oh, they're having a good time, averages 6% annual return. In one year, your 10,000 is 10,600. But again, go back into time. Uh, where you're looking at 10 years, 17908 20 years, over $32,000. All right, pause for a bit. Take a look at the differences. After one year, you've got $540 more in your investment account. Hey, you want to play with this? Put 10000 in a savings and 10000 in an investment and see what happens over the course of this time. So anyway, come on down here to 10 years. Now your 10,000 is worth almost $18,000 at 6%, 20 years, $32,000. Now we're talking about some money and don't think that the bank isn't using your money. It's not just sitting there, they're using your money to invest. So why don't you use it to invest and keep your money? Okay, look at the difference between saving and investing. One year, there's a $540 difference. Hey, you got 20 years ahead of you, almost $21,000 difference between investing and saving. Okay, I hope that that's a wake up call, but if that's not, let's play around with $50,000. And this may sound like an enormous amount of money to you, that's okay. It's, we're, we're using this as a hypothetical, but also, you know what? I want you to get up to $50,000 cash. I want you to do that. So some people have 50,000 bucks sitting around. I know, hard to believe, $100,000, even more sitting in cash. All right, so now we've got 50,000 in the savings, $50,000 in the investment account. Let's start with the savings. I'm gonna jump way down here to 10 years. It's worth oh, $53,082. Remember, we're just starting with 50,000. In 20 years, it grows to over 56,000. I'm not too excited. I don't even sound excited, do I? Investment account. Again, this is 6% is a pretty conservative, modest rate of return. 10 years. Ah, we're talking about some money now, folks. Your $50,000 is now close to 90,000. 20 years, you got 20 years, growing at 6% annually, $160,357. So which do you want in 20 years? You want 160,000? You want 56,000. That's the choice. So here's again is the difference between investing and savings. You get down to 10 years, $50,000. Your investments are making $36,460 more than, than what you would have earned from put, putting it in a savings account. 20 years, now you're talking about a six figures, $104,000 difference between investing and savings. All right. So I hope that that has taught you, explained the logic behind why you need to be investing, why you should not be hoarding cash. I'm all for an emergency fund, a, a good a good amount of money sitting in cash. But when it comes to tens and tens of thousands of dollars that are just sitting there that you don't need in the next six months, let's do something with it. All right. Now, I've convinced you, you're ready to go invest. It's like, I have no idea what I'm, what I'm doing. How am I going to get started? I have no interest in investing myself. Um, how do I hire somebody? How do I get started? Okay, and very good question. And I can give you a zillion different ways to get started. 
and that's going to confuse you even more. So I am going to go with two of the big companies that I trust and that really have very low fees. It's all about fees. You can go to an investment advisor and they can promise you that they're going to make 10% a year, which probably is not going to happen. Um, or you can go to one of these companies, invest in index funds, not pay those huge management fees, not pay those huge commissions to that investment uh, advisor, that broker who um, basically is making money off of you. Keep as much money as you can. That's my motto. So I like Fidelity and Vanguard. They mostly specialize. I mean, they've got all kinds of funds, but what I love are index funds. Index funds have uh, very, very low management fees and they just track the market. So you can um, uh, do an index funds of domestic stocks. You can do index funds of short-term bonds and all they're doing is tracking the market. So that keeps your costs really low. And there, if you do want a personal advisor, those advisor fees are really low too. So that's why, and they both, Fidelity and Vanguard have been around forever. I get nothing from promoting these. I'm a financial coach. I'm not an advisor. I don't take commissions. I don't, that's not the way I operate. I just go on reputation, credibility, performance. So uh, my investments are with Vanguard. I'm just going to put that out there. I have handled my own investments up until last year where I have used the services of a personal financial advisor at Vanguard. It's been a good experience, by the way. So I have here, let's start with Fidelity. Um, and I have the word here, robo-advisor. I'm going to do a whole nother video on robo-advisors because there's no need to go into all of that right now. The short of it is, is that you fill out um, a questionnaire, online questionnaire, online form and you know how much are you investing what's your goal when do you want to reach your goal uh, maybe some other questions and it will they will automatically put you into primarily index funds based on on those goals um, so but again there are so many different robo advisors that's a whole nother video but if you don't have the minimum and the minimum amount to invest at fidelity is twenty five thousand to get a personal advisor. Uh, at Vanguard, it is $50,000. You can open an account. Uh, some of the minimums might be 1,000, might be 3,000. You can start investing with smaller amounts. And that's something that I recommend and keep adding to it. Uh, when you reach a sizable amount, and of course that is relatively speaking, $25,000 to me is a good amount of money, 50,000 to you might seem like an outrageous goal, but that's that's the way it is. Um, when you reach that amount and you decide that you want somebody else to manage it, you can have access to a personal advisor. Their fee at Fidelity is 0.5%. At Vanguard, it is 0.3%. So again, this is for folks. They've got a lot of cash. They're worried about investing. They don't know how to invest. This is a really good starting point. It, once you get comfortable, either you're going to, you know, start making those decisions yourself or, you know, if you never get comfortable, um, get to a point where you can uh, invest, can, can get some assistance from an advisor who manages your portfolio. So again, Fidelity and Vanguard, check both of those out. But just don't be sitting on all that cash. You're, you're losing money every year to inflation, um, especially if you're looking at um, you know, five years from now, 10, 20 years. That's a lot of time for your investments to grow. Just don't freak out if you, know, you have a bad year. Um, things tend to bounce back. If you take out your funds, you've locked in that loss. So um, that's that's another piece of advice. So this is for people who are hoarding their cash, looking for another option. Check it out. Um, also, so I have gutsywomenfinances.com. I can help you um, learn about the basics of finance. And really, I'm into personal financial freedom. 
getting to the point where you, if you want to work, you can, but you choose to work, um, um, you know, really growing your wealth. So check us out at BetsyWomenFinances.com. Uh, I have all kinds of mini workshops. I have one coming up in March, Investing 101. Come on into the community. Uh, no long-term obligations. You can do this month by month, but I'd love to be able to help you um, learn about how to manage your money, how to become a master of your money, how to grow your wealth, how to be gutsy in terms of your dreams, your money, and your future. All right, that is it from this Money Monday. Hey, please subscribe below. Hope you had a good time. And until the next Money Monday, you guys take care. Bye.